everyone, Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? So good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by for my first video in 2019. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> well, I'm here today just to do a couple of things. This is not gonna be, I don't know how long it'll be, hopefully not an extremely long video. But Chris and I worked on above the cabinets last night. So I want to show you what we did above the cabinets and the decor we've added up there. I am also going to make a couple of 12 loop funky bows to put on my mantle. And I'm also going to do make a new bow for that big wreath. I'm going to show you that big wreath that I have hanging that I usually have hanging above the mantle. And I'm gonna tweak this wreath, make sure that it's good and sturdy so that Chris can put that up on the mirror. So just a little of this and a little of that. First though, I'm gonna start with putting this Pitberry garland that I got for Christmas from the pitberrybarn.com. Y'all look how pretty this is. This is a mixed berry garland from the Pip, P-I-P, I'll scroll it across the bottom, the pipberrybarn.com. I love the Pipberry Barn. I'm gonna start out the new year by touting them. No, I am not sponsored by them. I make no money <laughs> by telling you guys about them, but I just love them. They are lovely to work with. The customer service is second to none. And I, except for the rare exception by all of my Pitberry garlands and picks from the pitberrybarn.com. So without further ado, let me fix my camera here and I'm going to affix, I'm going to use the command strips that I had. I had, you know, I had a, a uh, right up here on my hood is what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I keep yammering and pointing at it, but y'all probably don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to put this up on that hood. And I have command strips up there that I used for the fall and then for the Christmas garlands. So I'm going to use the same ones and I'm going to go ahead and put this garland up there. We'll see how it looks. Hopefully I like it. I thought I would need two, but I think I'm only going to need one. So I fluffed it out a good bit here. So I'm going to see if I can get this into place. So I'll be right back when I get my camera situated and I'm going to climb up a step stool. <laughs> be right back. Okay, let's see if I can do this, you guys. Okay, let's see if I can do this, you guys. I have my step stool here. I'm gonna climb up, fingers crossed. I love it. I absolutely love that. back from it. Oh yes. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I love it. Alrighty. Well that worked out well and I have a whole nother Pitberry garland of the same that looks the same that I can use somewhere which I'm sure I will. But I love it you guys. Fun! Yay! All right, I'm gonna turn you around now and we're gonna to get to make it. I'm gonna show you this wreath first. I also wanted to show you one more thing that my wonderful aunt gave me for Christmas. See my little bless our home with love and laughter? That's like a candle caddy. Like a little warm little wrap for the candle. I'm gonna light my candle. put my Christmas thing away. There we go. Okay, okay. Now, let me pull my wreath up here real quick. Here is the wreath that hangs up on that mirror above my mantle. And I made this two or three years ago. It's a burlap wreath. It's huge. I'll measure it for you. It is right about 31 
inches across and same for up and down. I decided I want to put a different bow on this to match what I'm going to be doing on my mantle. So first thing I'm going to do is unfurl this bow. This is one of, and I just used the pip berries to tie them on. This is one of my tiered bows that I put a lot of, and look how well that's worked out. That's uh, held up, that's pretty. But I don't want the pip berry looking uh, ribbon in there any longer. Plus it doesn't quite match the burlap and it's always bothered me, it's kind of pulled my eye. So I'm gonna put that aside and I'm going to make me, you know, I'm trying to decide, I think I wanna make just a two color funky bow that's, that like is going to go on the staircase. So I have this and this, and this is what I'm gonna be using for the staircase. And this is what I'm gonna be adding in for the mantle. We're gonna do a tutorial for that. But for this one, I think I'll make a 12 loop funky bow or make it just like I'm making the steps. I actually wrote down how I, oh, I thought I did anyway. Oh, I did on this side. How I'm doing the staircase funky bows. Look at that. I made myself a little cheat sheet because I did those before Christmas and I knew I'd forget how I figured it out. So I need six burgundy strips at 24 inches and I need six burlap strips at 24 inches and I need one long burgundy strip at 40 inches. I may not need that. Two up of each color and two down. See that? Made myself a little cheat sheet. <laughs> so I'm gonna get to cutting here and I'll be back when I'm ready to make this bow. So. All right, you guys, I'm on my last one here, and I wanted to come back and show you that I'm gonna to try to turn over a new leaf <laughs> for 2019, and I'm gonna to try to start cutting my uh, dovetails uh, with the scissors going away from me. Instead of going toward my fingers, I want them to go away. So I'm actually gonna start at the edge, and I'm gonna cut down toward the, or start at the fold and cut down towards the edge. And that way, I think it is a little safer of a way. So I'm gonna try my best. I'm having to retrain myself because I always did them like this and cut up. But see how that can cut into your hand? So I am gonna try my best to do it the safer way <laughs> and start at the fold and cut down at an angle right to the edge. And that makes a dovetail. It makes the ends of your ribbons really pretty. So, and you don't have to do that. I like to do that to the ends of mine. Not everybody does. I like to. All right, let me put this camera up a little bit. We're gonna to get to making a funky bow here for this wreath. I do wanna cut a couple of longer strips here. I think of the burgundy. and I'm gonna tie that into the back when I'm done. Got myself a pipe cleaner, and put this up just a smidge. Okay, now, I said two up, two down, which tells me that I'm going to I'm gonna start, go ahead and start with the burlap here, fold it right in half, this will be a 12 loop funky bow, but only using two color ribbons, okay? So you can do funky bows any way you want to do them. You can switch the colors around, you can switch the lengths of your tails around. They don't all have to be cut at the same length. If you wanna have different, different size tails cut, like this one is gonna be one long piece here and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in at the very end, not as a loop, but as a tail. 
Uh, but the most important thing to do is to make sure that your loop size is consistent. And I'm gonna make these loops right about five and a half inches. So I went to my measuring tape and I measured out five and a half inches. And then I'm gonna go to the back tail and I'm going to twist that around. Even though it looks like two-sided ribbon, it really is texturally different and it catches the light differently. And this also helps to separate the tails out. So with each strip, I'm gonna have one loop and two tails. And as I go through the pattern of ribbons here, I go to this next one and I go to five and a half inches, I'm going to point two, the first two up from center, center being my thumb. Go to that back tail and twist. And then I'm gonna start the pattern over and the next two are going to go down from center. And this is kind of a, a new little way that I made up to make this particular funky bow, this does not follow my cheat sheet that I have on my Instagram or on my blog. This is kind of a new way that I figured out how to do these particular funky bows. Just because I only wanted to use two ribbons in each. So I'm gonna work my way all the way through all of these ribbons, two up, two down. There's two right down, there's the four, first four. Next two go up. Still measuring out five and a half inches. And still, I didn't do it to this one, did I? Going behind that, getting that back tail going in the same direction. There we go, next two. Again, folding it in half. Doesn't have to be perfectly in half, as close as you can get it. Point it down from center. two, go down from center. And I'm going to add this right in like that. And that will become two tails. And get my pipe cleaner. Go to the, about the center of the pipe cleaner, lay it beside your thumb, wrap the bottom around the bottom and the top around the top. Use the hand that you're holding the bow shut with resist, as resistance and pull tight. Get these fingers on your other hand up as close as you can. Pinch that ribbon together and twist. Twist the bow, twist, I twist both. And there we go. We have the start of a 12 loop using only two different ribbons, funky bow. And of course, the most important thing to do with any bow is to fluff, fluff, fluff. So I'm gonna be fluffing here for a minute. I might go ahead and tie it on the wreath and fluff it on there. Isn't that pretty? That is so pretty. I just love just using two. I think I do have a, a uh, video for this. If not, I have at least I have a blog 
So I'll put a link in the description of how I made this. If you guys would like to take a look at that. It will either be a blog or a, or a video. I can't remember exactly what I did for this. Anyway, I'm gonna put this, look at that. That is gonna be pretty on here. Oops. Find a way to tie this on. I'm tying it as tight as I can. I'm tying it to the pipberry stem. And I'm gonna wait until I get back to do some more fluffing. First thing I wanna do is figure out, I think I had these going around this flower. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull them both together. You know how things change when you you do things a little differently sometimes than I might have thought to do it. Push that over. And I'm going to bring these ribbons right down together. Push them together. And now put them into the pit bear. them hang. I'm going to hang. Just like that, I think. And everything else feels ooh, sorry pretty good with this I just need to do some tweaking with that bow and you do see these daisies on here and they're gonna stay I'm not gonna have any other daisies in this original I mean in this next uh, design I have on my fireplace but moving forward in time I'm certainly not going to pull these off because this is how I made this wreath so I think that's going to look super pretty hanging up there huh all right let me move my camera around and we're going to make us two more funky bows well and they are going to go on either side of my mantle which we are going to work on another day because I haven't found my pitberry garland and we are trying to clean up the, Chris is trying to get all the bins put up in the basement and I need to find my generic bins. So I'll be back though, sitting over there and we'll make a couple more funky bows. That I got more than one of these rolls of this stuff. I only was able to get, I may, I'm cutting four of each type of ribbon here. I'm making 12 loop funky bows with four ribbons of each, of each of the three ribbons. And this, I only got seven pieces out of it. So I'm really glad I bought another one or I would be out of luck here. I need one more of these. I also wanted to come back and tell you guys that this is not the same stuff I used on my Christmas trees or on my Christmas tree and then in that one funky bow that I made for the flocked wreath here. This is not the same stuff. This is thinner and as you can see I've been able to cut it with scissors. So it's a little bit easier to work with. I don't have to pre-pinch it or anything like that. This is a lot more user-friendly than that other stuff. So I just wanted to be sure to tell you guys that. And then as you can see, I've been trying to stay with my new uh, little promise to myself and to try to cut these in a safer way, cut these dovetails starting at the fold and cutting down toward the edge. I know I've spent the last two years cutting them the other way, but I'm just too afraid after that one lady told me that she cut herself doing them the way I do them. Lord have mercy, you guys. I do not ever want anyone to ever get hurt 
by doing something the way I do it. So we're gonna do it this way from now on. Whether it feels quote unquote wrong to me or not, I'll get used to it and it'll start feeling right to me, right? Right. <laughs> All right, there we go. So I've got my ribbons cut for two funky bows. So let me go ahead and do one on camera for you guys. Then I'll put it into fast motion to do the second one. And then I'm gonna give you a little tour of the decor above my cabinets. And we'll probably call this one done after that, you guys, just because I don't have everything I need to do my mantle yet. So I've gotta wait another day on that. So let's finish these couple of bows up and we'll call this one done. All right, again, this is a 12 loop funky bow using four strips of ribbon of each type. Every strip is gonna get folded right in half and I'm gonna go find five and a half inches on my measuring device. Pinch it together and go to that back tail and twist. And as I go through this pattern, I'm gonna go through the entire pattern of ribbon here, pointing the loops up from center the first time through the pattern. Then I'm gonna point the loops down from my thumb, which is center, and then back up and back down. And this stuff likes to stick to everything, or likes to grab everything. But again, I'm gonna use it the same way, fold it right in half, find five and a half inches, pinch it together, and it's easily pinched. Also two, it is gonna be a little thicker than the ribbon might be, but also two, uh, try to, slide the ribbons in sideways like that and don't pile them on top of one another. It works better if you can kind of slide them in sideways like that. Okay, here we go. Next time through, we're gonna point that loop down from center, just like that. And again, go to that back tail, twisting it to bring the right side or the same side forward. And a half, bring it down from center, pinch it together, twist. These bows, I didn't say, are going to go on either side of my Pipberry garland that I'm going to hang on my mantle. tie in nicely with it. All right, so that's the second time through the pattern. We have two more times to go. Fold it right in half, five and a half inches, and this time we're gonna point that loop up from center. One more time. And we're gonna turn them and go down from center. Let's see if I can pull my burgundy over here. Cut myself. Mm, about that long. <laughs> Don't worry about exactly how long that is. I'll measure it out here. And I made that right. Oh, well, look at that. Right about 24 to 25 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in make two tails. See that? All right, get my pipe cleaner. I'm gonna lay it beside my thumb. Wrap it around the bottom around the bottom and the top around the top. Use my hand. I didn't quite get that centered. I'm holding the bow with as resistance. Pull tight and twist. Got this pipe cleaner poking into my hand. My goodness. There we go. Alrighty. Then, of course, the next thing is the fluffing. Let's see how I can make this look. Fluff, fluff, fluff. The most important part of any bow. <laughs> I haven't changed what I say in the new year, have I? <laughs> say the same old stuff. Most important part of any bow is the fluffing. Get your hand really down into that loop and fluff. Okay. 
And I'm gonna wait till I hang them up to cut the tails. So there we go. I think that's gonna be pretty. I don't know, I'll mess with this for a while until I get it exactly the way I want it. But that's the basic bow. All right, so I'm gonna put this into fast motion here. I'm gonna go ahead and quick make this other bow and then when I come back, I'll give you a tour above the cabinets and I guess that'll be it. I'll come back with some final words and then we'll do the tour. How about that so I can look at you doing my final words. All right, be right back. Here we go into fast motion. Shoom! guys sorry about that I had to go let Sam in he has been a booger butt today in and out and in and out and in and out I feel like we have a revolving door <laughs> oh my goodness but anyway I finished my second bow as you saw and I am sure and I set my camera tripod on it oh my goodness I am sure that once I get them put up that I will be doing more tweaking. But that is going, they, these are the bows that are gonna go on either side, and they're gonna have tails either side of the Pitberry Garland that I put up there on that mantle. So I'm really excited to get this all together. I can't wait. So that will definitely be the next video you guys see. It will be me putting that mantle together. I promise you, that'll be the next one. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to go now and I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and I'm going to just take you around the tops of the kitchen and show you what we did above the cabinets and I'll show, give you a closer look at that Pitberry Garland on the hood. And that'll be it for this one. I might do a little uh, video to just music in the, in the dark, you know, with, with all the lights off when it's dark outside. I did a little video of that just to music at the end. So you can see, I'm really happy with how they turned out. I really am very, very happy. So you guys will see. All right, so that's it. <laughs> uh, let me just say that I hope that those of you who are struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, spending their days with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day making each day the very best it can be because I know that each day can be a struggle if you are struggling like that. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or where it should be. I love you all to bits to bits to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And remember in crafting, there are no mistakes, only unique creations. All righty, I'll be right back behind the camera, but while I'm looking at you, I'll just say until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye. Be right back behind the camera. Okie dokie, everybody. Here we go with the tops of the cabinets. We had to move a few things around up on this one, that uh, house, that Dickens house was really over here in the middle. And so we moved that over to the edge so that we could fit that entire, let's see if I can zoom you in, there we go. Entire welcome <laughs> sign up there. You can see the Longenberger basket in the back and my lanterns are still there. You can't really see the lights in them. I'll turn the lights out. It's starting to get dark here and maybe see how it looks at this time. It's about twilight right now. But there you can see uh, Kim's little flower pot up there that she gave me and I thought it should take a place of honor. So we put it up there. And then we decided not to put anything up on top of the hood this time. But Chris does have some up lights up there pointing to that faith, family, and freedom light. 
That thing is huge. It doesn't look it, but if you get it down from there, it's huge. <laughs> so then here we go to the next gang of cabinetry here. Whoops, get my fingers out of the way. And I added the star in place of the joy. Actually, Chris added the star. I did not do any of this. He did this, all of this for me. But he added the star. I told him where to put things, you know, or ask him to put them there. <laughs> and added the welcome plate. Let me kind of move over this way too so you can see, excuse my lights. And uh, I'm leaving the little snowmen up there in this basket over here, right there. I'm gonna leave them there. And I already have a sign picked out that says blessed to replace the snowmen when they come back down. And I left the little uh, pine flocked pine trees that I got from Walmart left them up there did add that candle in the back and of course the welcome that turned out real cute and then if we look this way here we go there's the sign my aunt and uncle got me for Christmas gather here with grateful hearts added another candle on a brass candlestick up there as we move this way, there's one of those lit pictures that we got from Williamsburg. Decided only to use one of those in this mix. I'm not sure what I'll do with the other two, uh, but I'll figure it out. And then I have a family sign over here and then a little uh, house light. That's like a little house with a candle light sticking out of its roof, kind of. And let me get back zoom back out. There we go. I love this pit berries. That's going to work out really well there for the rest of the year. I love that. Okay, let me turn out all these lights. Let's see how it looks. There we go. When it's really dark, it looks really pretty. There you can see the up light. Onto the plate. That's pretty. It looks really pretty in the evening when you look out here, you guys. It really, really does. And all of these things can be turned off by one switch, and I'll show you where that switch is in a minute. When we built this house, we had forethought enough to think that we wanted to have outlets above the cabinets, and they are all getting together down onto one switch in this gang here of switches. This is over the sink, this is the under cabinet lighting, and then that is the above the cabinet lighting. So I'm really happy with how this worked out. Chris was an angel to help me <laughs> again, and I'm really loving this addition to the decor. It really is pulling things together nicely. Um, I'm trying to zoom back out. There we go. And uh, there's a sneak peek at the mantle. Ooh. Tell you about that in the next video. Those lights were not fun. But anyway, that's it for this one, you guys. So, again, I already said my final word, so I'll reiterate all of that to you guys. And just say I love you all to bits to bits to bits. <laughs> and I'll just say it until next time. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. Y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.